Okay, hello everyone and thank you for attending the presentation. Thank you Camille for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Alexander Spiru, my background is in music. I'm a composer coming from the classical music world, I guess, but uh, one of my main interests has been to augment classical instruments. And although my presentation today is uh, not directly about that, I'm going to play a very, very short excerpt of uh, my work so that you get an idea about how it sounds, because the presentation would be quite theoretical. So, just a very short excerpt from a concert I did in Switzerland a few years ago. My sound that I use, for example, when I have slow notes, and suddenly I hear it's 20 times louder than I'm used to be. Like it's, it's really something. Like I, I really have to get used to this kind of sensation. Really, it's, it's like a driving a super fast Ferrari. Something. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Um, and now I'm going to get into the main part of my presentation, which is thank you, uh, which is about a new project that I'm working on, and this project will also include a paper. So uh, let me just start off by by explaining that uh, I had some delays with my uh, funding application, so. The project has not been realized yet, so I'm going to present you the concept and the outline of the paper. All right, so in this project, I'm basically studying the effectiveness of vibrotactile sensor technology uh, in the creation of an augmented reality music experience. And the term, of course, augmented reality covers a very wide range of technologies, techniques and systems that allow the overlay of physical and virtual information. And the distinctive features of this blend is that it takes place in real time and it is site-specific or medium-specific and it happens in an interactive manner. Uh, with the proliferation of consumer-grade AR devices, this has made augmented reality applications accessible to a wide range of fields, including the arts. And while the initial focus of the technology companies has been the visual domain, the significance of 3D audio for a fully immersive experience has become apparent. So, the VR industry has adopted the technique of ambisonics uh, to deliver a kind of 360 degrees audio for videos, for gaming, and in general virtual reality experiences. Ambisonics is a method for recording, mixing, and playing back three-dimensional audio. Okay, so we can sense uh, space through audio. Now, how do these connect to music and can there actually be an augmented reality music experience purely on the level of sound? Now we mentioned that a virtual reality or an augmented reality experience is the overlay of virtual and real data. So in the case of music that would mean real sound and virtual sound. Uh, we also mentioned that it should be in real time, it should be site-specific and interactive. But 
what is real sound and what is virtual sound. For example, is the sound of a violin real and a recorded sound or an electronic sound virtual? And then if we record the sound of the violin, does this become virtual? So taking into account Milgram and Kishino's reality virtuality continuum, on the left pole we have a purely real environment and on the right pole we have a purely virtual environment. So I claim that in the case of music, any sound coming from the real, the physical environment, should be considered a real sound, regardless of its origin. And any sound coming from the virtual environment should be considered a, a virtual sound. So the virtual sonic environment in this case is this personalized layer of each user. Now, moving on to the actual project and experiment. So, I have created this experiment to study the effectiveness of vibrotactile technology. And this, uh, this experiment, this project, uh, features uh, a piece that includes real-time interaction between voice and electronics. It features both very low amplitude and very high amplitude sounds, so very quiet and very loud sounds, uh, very low pitch and very high pitch sounds, and it features binaural recordings and, of course, uh, ambisonics in order to create uh, the sense of immersive audio. Now, how can we evaluate immersive audio? Taking into account the overall listening experience and extended this concept to immersive audio, I propose the evaluation of immersion based on two factors. First, presence and emotion. So, to get a little bit more practical, I have designed two settings for the experiment. In the first setting, uh, which I call the vibrotactile setting. Uh, we have a laryngophone in the first step. That is a device that the singer wears. It's a kind of haptic device, I guess, that picks up uh, vibration directly from the singer's throat. Uh, this is then transferred to the computer where the signal processing takes place, and then this is diffused to um, to the user through bone conduction. Now, if you notice the, the third step, you will see that this is actually, this touches the, the skull bones of the user and allows for the ear to be left open. So this creates a kind of very intuitive blend between sound, between music coming from the real environment and virtual sound. Now, in the second setting, um, somehow more traditional, uh, we have a microphone picking up the singer's voice, and then this is transferred in uh, to the computer, and then this is diffused. Hmm? Okay, so this is diffused uh, through through headphones. So, I have three main hypotheses for this experiment. First, the participant's sense of presence will be higher in the first setting. Second, the participant's ratings of induced and perceived emotions will be also higher in the first setting. And the participant's sense of presence will correlate with induced and perceived emotions at a higher rate in the first setting. Now, I'm going to skip uh, the methodology and I'm going to go directly to this slide. So the way that I evaluate presence is through three factors. The first one is sound, uh, sense of space, sound specialization. Uh, the second is engagement, motivation or distraction. And the third one is negative effects. And for emotion, again, three factors. The first one being balance, 
pleasure or displeasure or anything in between. Uh, energetic arousal, feeling awake or tired. And last, tense arousal, feeling tense or calm. This will be analyzed statistically uh, with a paired T test and a Sperman's rank correlation. So um, this was a little bit rushed in the end, but uh, I hope you get you get the idea of the project.